Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Evermore Alpaca with part four of my manned mission to Eve series. In part three, we landed on the planet Eve, and we are now ready to do some science and then get back into orbit. So we're going to do a crew report here, and then head on over to the rover. Let's, uh, let's plant a flag while we're here, so people know we were here. Keep landing, and we'll talk a little bit of smack. And we can take a surface sample and do an EVA report while we remember it. Alright, let's get into our rover. Alright, we're going to want to decouple from the top. Decouple from the bottom. Turn off the brakes. And we're out. All right, let's do some science. And let's go collect our data. Ooh, that was graceful. He's going to be in Rio 2016 doing some gymnastics. Actually, and for the EVA report, the surface sample and the crew report, let's deposit those in our lander here. Alright, let's make our way on over. One thing we're going to be careful about is sometimes if you physics warp too close to another object, the other object wants to explode for no reason whatsoever. So we're just going to keep it on 1x until we get far enough away. Let's head on over. Well, let's take a look. I think if we head on over here, we should be able to get the lowlands in here, as well as maybe the sea. I'm not sure how exactly they did the sea biome. If you actually have to be in it, or just next to it. I think that was just the um, little separator at the bottom, so I'm not too worried about it. I hope. We are in the Eve Lowlands, and let's get out and do some science. Do an EVA. We can take a surface sample right from here. And let's do this experiments in the back. Range between very cold and hot enough to boil water. Lovely. I think this is a nice place to live. Most dignified Kerbal. It might be a little bit difficult to walk around here. He is definitely waddling. 
We're going to collect our data. All right, let's get back in. And let's head on down to the Explodium Sea. And we're in the Explodium C. Let's slow down, put on the brakes, and let's do some more science. Don't want to cancel that out. I guess we're just going to do the resettable ones. We've done our Explodium C data. Let's head back up. We are back at Mission Control here. We just have to collect our data, put it in the lander, and then we're going to have to refuel the lander. We're going to do that with ISRU. It's probably going to take quite a while. I didn't specifically pick a landing location to have a high amount of ore. So it could take as long as a couple hundred days. But it'll take what it takes. All right, let's extend the drill. Extend the solar panels. Set ISRU to liquid fuel and oxidizer. And we're going to have to make liberal use of fast forward here. This is going to take quite a while. We have done what we came here to do. We're fueled up. We're ready to launch. Now, the orbit was a little bit skewed, so instead of launching directly east, we're going to want to launch a little bit south of east. Other than that, it's not too critical. We have extra delta V in both the, uh, the lander and the tug that's in orbit, so it won't hurt us either way. One thing that's going to help us is in addition to not having to go through as much atmosphere, being at three kilometers means that our swivel engine will have more thrust when we're first taking off. It'll have enough gimbal to help us control because we definitely want to get to vertical as soon as possible. So we're throttled up. Let's go. Pull this over to vertical. And we're going to go for vertical for quite a while. We don't want to be pushing through heavy atmosphere for more than we have to so our first order of business is to get out of there it's not like Kerbin where you can uh, afford to start turning over early and be all efficient we just need to go directly vertical even if it's not contributing to our orbital speed all right the first four aerospike engines are uh, done we're going to shed those. And 
not turning over yet because when we ditch these next two engines our TWR is going to drop again and we won't be accelerating that much you can see we're only accelerating at about one or maybe two meters per second it's starting to turn a little bit we, we do want to stay vertical for a little bit I'm going to turn on SAS because it is getting a little bit squirrely. I'm just going to turn off the gimbal so that doesn't waste fuel. We should be able to do all our turning with the torque from the lander can. And we can f afford to start turning over just a little bit. Although not too much because our TWR will drop again when we drop those two engines. So we're turning over, we're dropping, going a little bit south of east. Not a lot. One thing you definitely want to make sure is that your time to apoapsis is increasing. If it's decreasing, then that means you're probably going to slowly start falling back to EVE. Well, we're pretty high, we wouldn't fall back to EVE, but we'd start to waste a lot of time as we start going very horizontal through the atmosphere we can start turning over more being as we're almost at one minute to apoapsis we can see we are our apoapsis is almost above the atmosphere now it is we're going to keep on the throttle until we burn out of this engine now once here we're going to put this completely flat just going to keep burning to make sure we have enough time because this has quite a long burn time Let's just quickly calculate an estimated burn to circularize our orbit. Alright, that's a little more than we we'll need. Let's start burning now. Just wanted to do that quickly to get an estimate. We're not really following that maneuver. You may notice we are doing quite a bit of the Delta V with just this last stage. It's very lightweight as the efficient Terrier engine. This is uh, just an efficient way to do it. Probably could have started gravity turning a little more while still in the atmosphere, but it's always nice to get out of EVE as quickly as possible. You can see our orbit is almost circularized. In another couple seconds, our periapsis will be above ground, and there it goes. And we're in a circular orbit. We've escaped the purple planet, and um, orbit looks pretty good. As I said, we weren't going to end up on the same plane as the other orbit, no matter what we did. But we have an intersection, and that should be only a couple hundred meters per second delta V. We'll find out exactly how much in a little bit. And if we run out of fuel with this thing, we can always do the rest of it with the tug, which also has excess delta V in it. But we're going to use this for now, because we might as well use all the fuel that we have in it. That is actually more of a burn than I thought to get on the same plane, but that, as I said, we have extra delta V in the tug if we need it. I don't think we have enough delta V in just this thing to do that maneuver. Maybe we do. Maybe. Our little calc handy dandy calculator seems to think that we do.
part of that is because as this um, as this runs out of fuel, there's it's just so simple that the fuel is basically the entire weight of this thing. So as it gets low on fuel, it gets very light. You can see it is um, only at a couple thousand kilograms there. This is less than your mom's car. We're going to lock the gimbal too, no reason for that to be squirreling all about. And we're out of fuel. That is, uh, and we're in the same orbit, more or less. Our capsule's done a good job. It is now just a dead brick soaring above Eve. So we're going to hop on over to the other machine. We are over back at the tug. Now let's set the pod as a target. And let's rendezvous. We're roughly on the same orbit. And let's see. That's, uh, that's us there. The pod is over here. What is that? Oh, that's land. That's our lander. Okay. So the pod is ahead of us. Now let's see who's got the higher orbit. We do by quite a bit. Um. Well, let's uh, let's just let it catch up. Shall oh. Actually, there's not much difference here. We're gonna let's wait till the periapsis, and we'll drop that orbit in a bit, and that should help us catch up. So that's 180 by 100. So if ours... Let's not drop it by too much because we don't want it to go flying on by us. It also would help if we were to match the orbit somewhat. Actually, it's going to be easier to match the orbit if we do it right at one of the intersects. So let's pick an intersect. Get the periapsis and our apoapsis to line up. Those are about perfectly lined up. Only problem is I can't figure out which one's ours and which one's theirs. Well, I guess we're um, we're behind it, so we are the one with the higher time too. So we're gonna wanna drop that in a little bit. That looks fine. And 75. All right, so we'll um, at that rate we'll slowly catch up to it, which is fine. We can afford to wait a couple orbits. Let's face our burn direction. Luckily, this thing rotates much easier now. Now let's just fast forward until we catch up here. It's going to take us a little while here. And I actually overshot my node by a bit, but I'm not too fussed about it. All right. Let's fast forward a little bit more.
we are nearing on our rendezvous now. Let's uh, get Jebediah EVA'd. We're going to EVA our way over. Take our data. At some point it's going to go flying on by us. We want to just try to match what it's doing here. And here we are at the tug. This will be Jebediah's home for quite a while. Store our experiments board. And it is now time to calculate our trip back to Kerbin. I'm going to leave that for part five. This has been part four of the manned mission to Eve series, and thank you for watching.